One of the biggest benefits is now it's more accessible for many people who are not very experienced. Hi, Tarek. How was your... We can also talk about it. Like, yeah, how, how was your week? I heard you were at the conference that I was at, but we did not see each other. Exactly. But we need better communication. I know. Because we were just discussing that we need to see each other before you go exactly. on holiday. And then we were in the same space at the same time. And we did not see each other. And I had to eat lunch almost alone, knowing that you were there. What did you... I don't know. I, don't, I wasn't a big fan of the lunch, but it's okay. It's a different story. Same, same. There were lots of choices, but not all good. And also, we're talking about the SEM Rush Spotlight Conference that happened this week in Amsterdam, which is uh, a city where we both live. And yeah, it was fun. Like a lot of good speakers, actually. You saw, like, what were your highlights? Uh, I told like one of them was, I said in the main stage, so I wasn't in the mastermind sessions like you. This is why we miss each other, I think. But there was a talk from the ex-social media manager from Duolingo. She's now managing DoorDash. I think that was super cool because I like the way they do content on social. So that was nice to just check some of the insights from her. I think that's like the talk I was looking forward to the most, to be fair. Nice. Yeah, I saw the one that I didn't actually attend both of those earlier talks because I was in the masterminds, which are also nice because I think you actually get to like talk to people, which yeah. is really cool. Um, I'm just going to start sharing my screen because I thought this was related to our first point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was in one mastermind with someone who I will not name because she is very trusted in the AI scene. You bold more. <laughs> like, but she did give a little tea. Actually, she didn't give tea. It was more like being cautious of how she does not trust open AI as much as she does Anthropic. And I think the, I and why. how she did not, te I mean, she tested Atlas, but she did not put any, you know, personal information or logins because she's very unsure of how that can be used. It's very risky to give up your information to like AI yeah. like that. And uh, so this gives, a, this brings us to the first update of this week, which is basically chat GPT Atlas exploited fake URLs and memory injection. So what really happened is, um, Security researchers showed that Atlas address bars can pass hidden instructions to the model when a URL actually contains a prompt. Um, so how Atlas works, uh, for those of you out there that don't know, they kind of have AI agents that allow you to surf the web with a built-in bot companion called an agent that can do a range of time-saving tasks, uh, you know, summarizing web pages, making your shopping list, uh, creating social media campaigns, sending out emails for you. So basically your AI assistant. And um, why this was risky is because it is susceptible to something called prompt injections. So I got this really good overview from uh, this uh, CNBC article, actually. And basically, an AI browser is the agent scanning and reading every web page a user or the agent visits. A hacker can trip up the agent by planting a certain command designed to hijack the bot, and it's called the prompt injection. So on a website, oftentimes, in a way that can be seen by people and that way will be picked up by the bot. So how this is malicious is because it can actually, you know, when the bot is scanning a page to help you execute a task, it might be given some sort of faulty instructions through hackers and uh, your personal information can be taken advantage or they can execute a prompt on your behalf and post something very salacious on social media. So yeah, it's kind of risky. Eric, how do you feel about this nonsense? Uh... Yes, I wouldn't buy anything <laughs> on Atlas. I think we talked about this last time. Or we last mentioning... week, we were like, oh, yeah. Atlas is going to change the game if they can execute the prompt safely, but clearly it's failing. Like, But I think still, moving forward, if they can fix some of the security issues that they have, it might really change the way we browse. But at the moment, I think, yeah, I'm going to stick to my Chrome because the way they're promoting Atlas, at, at least, is like, yo, you can purchase, like, you can let the agent purchase for you, buy for you, you can sign in to some certain platform, so you're going to share sensitive passwords, for example. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I'm going to keep my credit card to myself and my logins, my... Close to our <laughs> to myself. Well, close I think to there will be a time... <laughs> There will be a time where for sure I'm going to use it, especially if more people start to share more use cases online that I think would be helpful. But for now, anything sensitive or any files I want to like review sens that are sensitive, I'll keep my Chrome. <laughs> Very true. And some, uh, I guess, some uh, uh, good steps to take in, uh, keep in mind 
um, when using Atlas is like, you know, strip hit. If also, if you want to have your pages on Atlas or have it scrapable, et cetera, like to make sure that your website's, uh, you know, strip hidden instructions, sanitize any copy paste, add something called content security policies where possible to your data. So yeah, there's lots of ways to sort of protect yourself and also protect your brand so that when if people are still using Atlas to execute functions, you don't find yourself in the middle of some like, you know, lawsuit or whatever for yep. exploiting people coming to your page. Next update, um, this is very much in Tarek's uh, content creation house. Sora 2 updates, so storyboards, reusable characters, stitching, and more. Bunch of new features have dropped with Sora uh, from in mid-October, so the ability to have reusable character cameos, multi-clip stitching, uh, discovery features like leaderboards. This I don't really understand so much, so I'm looking forward to Tarek kind of breaking down. Uh, yeah, have nah, you played it yeah? Don't do that. I'm, I'm not that expert in it yet. <laughs> but what have you played around with that has uh, piqued your interest? No, I think at least for what I'm doing with my current role is that we want to animate lots of images uh, into like into videos because just to give some context, so we're uh, <clears throat> for the company I work for at the moment, which is SoundCloud, we have a brand campaign where like basically we help merchants ship their products. And the campaign was, is, uh, we have products that are talking and they say like, okay, ship your product with SoundCloud, make them proud, blah, blah. But all of these products are like Toy Story characters. So we have, so we have lots of mm-hmm. images of these characters and we want to transform them into videos where they are talking because potentially that could be like a nice campaign where if you have a store, we would send you uh, the picture of your product or the product that you're selling, telling you, yo, use our platform. So I've been trying different tools to make that happen, like Kling, VO3, and I've done that with Sora, and the result was like, okay, this is actually possible to scrape a product image from a website, transform it into a video, telling the owner like, hey, ship me using this company. And I think there's lots of great possibilities with Sora. Of course, I'm... Right. Um, have some limitations because you know when it comes to budget and sora you cannot use it and this like unlimitedly unfortunately at the moment there are some limitations when it comes to that but yeah if you're b2c specifically you can create some amazing stuff with it uh, product shots coming to life studio quality videos um, like showcasing your product in use so for b2c this is a game changer, especially if you're e-commerce businesses. B2B, I think you have to get more creative on how like, okay, I can use this to highlight some of the pain points I'm selling. But I think the images are on point. Um, the audio is on point. It's kind of scary. I think it's at some point going to be tough to know if it's AI or not. So super scary stuff. Yeah. And I, I love the reusable character. So I saw some like uh, examples of this online and that's super nice because yeah, you can like, Build out your whole like content calendar with these, like you know, and uh, yeah. So I just find it very cool. I'm not a video editor myself or a content creator, but like I feel mm. quite empowered to try it myself. No, I think there's so many channels that will benefit from this on YouTube, like faceless, uh, faceless channels that you mm-hmm. know create a lot of this explainer content. For example, I think a lot but- of like also you know those um yeah like uh, videos on tutorial videos on how to use uh tools and stuff. So for like a even like for a B2B point of view, I think it, it would work. Yeah, I think I just for B2B, it's, you have to get creative. Like, okay, how can I use this to help someone out? Uh, so in my case, again, because it was, we, we provide a shipping solution. Uh, I think one, we didn't use Sora yet for it, but we're using different AI tools is, uh, uh, you know, the 8-bit, Mario Mario kind of style games yeah. where, where like it's pixelated and you have someone like Mario is trying to ship the softwares and then you can create some Running fun maze yeah yeah well. I think you can create some fun brand campaign just to get some engagement uh, but other than that yeah you have to get creative it's cool do you uh, I feel kind of worried for the future of um, these content creation studios or these animation studios like People now have the power to create it themselves. So yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. I, uh, that's we're, kind of... we're not there yet, of course. People can do like, I think that's the cool part. One of the biggest benefits is now it's more accessible for many people who are not very experienced in video editing and animation. So that's already amazing for this section of the audience. 
but yeah, if you're an agency or an editor, you're probably feeling yeah, you're probably Good feeling luck. scared. <laughs> but that's the thing. Maybe they have an advantage is that they understand how to prompt it. Like for me, exa- for you? example, if I'm gonna use Sora, I don't, ha- I have no idea what kind of light I need to use, what kind of camera lens, what kind of camera angle. So I think with these experienced people, they can really have a nice prompt. Like, hey create this video with this character, make sure that the light is this, you're using this lens. And also how to highlight the product or whatever you're trying to convey. Yeah, I think they can create... Product placement and stuff, which is something you can't like completely... I think the quality from their prompt will be much better from the average person who doesn't know how these things work. So they should sell prompts that we will then purchase. So there is a new like business... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they can still sell their services, but they will do it much, much quicker. Let's see. Tarek's out here trying to save the agencies. Very noble. Yeah, you know, I don't want AI to take over. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. And also, we, I wanted to ask, because I saw on LinkedIn that you posted this video. What software were you trying? Like, which AI tool were you trialing where you which... could remove the background uh, character? Like people? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Runway. Oh, runway so is sick yeah so if you haven't used runway check it out uh, i was just testing their video removal feature okay where you can remove anything from any video uh so I was just i was walking down the street saw lots of people recorded the video and then i told runway remove the people and the bikes and it did just that in a video not in an image i think in an image now we know like photoshop can do this for you uh, nano yeah. banana but for a video that was super impressive uh, cool. Uh, they also have lots of different features that if you're, I don't know, recording in the dark or it's raining, it can become sunny. It can become. So you uh, can yeah. basically play like. VF- yeah. It's like VFX, basically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Also, you're you're creating most... a whole studio with like live images. <laughs> yes. But of course, you need to buy lots of credits to mm. if you want to do this on, I don't know a 10 minute video and you have lots of things you want to fix, it's going to cost you lots of credits. I think for five seconds, it costs the X amount of credits. Mm-hmm. Oh so, yeah, that's not Runway, that's Polo AI. What's Polo AI? But actually they said that it's Runway. Runway I AI think... video generator. So maybe the company is Polo? Maybe they're Where's using the their API. Oh, so it's not, yeah. oh, it's this one. My bad. Yeah. Is it this, this one? one? Yeah. Oh, dude, that is so, me- like, I hate, I hate when this happens. <laughs> But the, the thing is, you can use Runway. I didn't even see with... it was a sponsor just now because it was blocked by my Riverside uh, window. So I just clicked the first No, because you have a lot, a lot of these uh, third-party tools that allows mm-hmm. you to use any g- video generation model in one place. And uh, they're, oh yeah, fair enough. So they're using it for their marketing. Oh, but this is how it looks like. Way cleaner. Looks cool though. So when you log in, there's a place called Tools. And in the tools, you can see like remove, uh, removal, mm-hmm. uh, change day of time, uh, time of day, sorry. Uh, stuff like that. Super cool. cool. We'll check it out later. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Can't we recommend have... this enough. I love this tool. Yeah. So that was the one. Yeah. I was curious to know what you use because it looked really sick. Like that's like that simple video that you put on LinkedIn like looked so professionally done like i thought you had recorded it in two different like times or whatever like it looked that well done runway runway ml.com and it, we go. Not, not polo a... we do not endorse polo we don't know polo. <laughs> and also this is not a sponsored video but, but no, i love i love, I love this bad. i love this, this yeah bad. i love this tool awesome okay next update for the week is google deep minds google's deep mind block rank um so block rank is basically a new research method um for shortlisting, shortlisting documents inside a model's context window. window. So this is a bit more technical. And why this actually matters um, is it's supposed to improve the way AI answers um, so are picked. So it's supposed to help us, the end user, get better high quality information. Um, there's a lot of chatter going on in the space of SEO and whether or not this is part of Google's uh, core ranking, but we don't really have much to prove because as we always know, Google does not give out all the information. So SEOs play a lot of guesswork, um, but it's something interesting to keep an eye out to see how it will be used in the future in, you know, sort of like um, at, like um, presenting the search engine result page um, and giving us information from either Google's uh, AI or on uh, on Chrome. So yeah, and anything for you to add there, uh, Tarek? Uh, no. Not really. <laughs> 
I Next prefer time. not to speak about something. I don't know how it works. <laughs> yeah, because this is more this is more on like news in the in the SEO world that yeah. might be interesting. And we have a lot of resources uh in this like show notes thing that we'll share. So you guys can deep you can read into it and then let us know after if you have any feedback or any insights. Uh last update for this week is that Google Labs launches Pomeli uh for small medium businesses. So I find this very interesting. Um what it does it's essentially going to act like an on-brand marketing campaign uh creator so like an agency essentially where they will take your business DNA profile, you know, your tone of voice, etc. and propose campaign ideas uh so essentially branded content they're a branded content creator for you in yeah. a form of um of a product and um this is super cool i have not tested it because it's only currently rolled out i think in the states canada yep. australia and new zealand we are patiently waiting for it to drop down in amsterdam in uh, the europe so look can... really sick right it There's looks amazing advertised It's gonna be nice. <laughs> yeah, so excited to try that out. And once more, agencies are really under attack here. From- yeah, and also I feel like once again the way they're promoting it is mm-hmm. for B two C. You know, I want to see like how this can be used for B two B because the way uh, with the ads and the, and the videos they're sh- they're showing with this tool is like it's a it's a recipe or it's a it's a restaurant, it's a product. So I think for B two C. We're gonna have a party with this <laughs> for B two B. I wanna, yeah. Before yeah, giving any me. any advice, I wanna check it out, see how it works, yeah. and if it's gonna be as easy for B two B. Because of course, you don't have a physical product to animate. You know, it's usually a software, mm-hmm. different features. So I wonder how this tool is gonna take that DNA from the website for this software, and what kind of yeah, what kind of visuals and assets it's gonna create. Yeah. Really intrigued with this. I think about tools like Framer, right, which is a design tool, but that could that's also like B two B, yeah, kind of, right? It is B two B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's and, both. Um, yeah. And for them, they have such a strong uh, branding, like brand DNA. And for other tools like that, I feel like they could now sort of almost copy <laughs> Framer with a, with you know this sort of like studio with Google yeah. Apps and this like AI tool essentially to create more um more polished branding because Framer has a team of really you know stand out designers uh-huh. to sort of help them with that brand identity so i think it kind of like you know democratizes the places like it democratizes the field like even out the playing field for yeah. for new tools to have like a cooler a more cohesive branding um exactly uh, and i see lots of teams who spend lots of time creating brand guidelines and mm-hmm. you know you have to follow them i think with this kind of tools like they mentioned it can be more consistent and across. implemented almost so yeah, it's like exactly. kind of, yeah no it's taking away human error of course yeah that. it's uh, but that's the thing now there's so many cool tools but so many subscriptions as well like it's going to be a cost yeah. factor at the end you know i feel yeah. like how yeah there it's possible but at what cost <laughs> Yeah, at this point in time, we have to prioritize. Okay, this is my monthly budget. Which mm-hmm. tools I'm gonna use? We cannot use everything, unfortunately. But maybe it makes more sense for you to use this Google tool and not Sora tool because you want to put more consistent ads. Uh, for example, if you're more into video, like okay, let's just invest in Sora. Ignore the other things. Uh, I think that's gonna be a big problem moving forward. Managing yeah. all of these subscriptions until you have. This one platform that does it all. I feel like there's just going to be subscription managers. Like that's yeah. going to be a new role for tech companies. Someone to keep in, you know, like to do the auditing of the tools, like to know what it's in the marketing stack, what's in the tech stack. Like, well, they, they can use an AI I, tool for sure to do that. To do that, <laughs> make it better. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Tarek, for your time. Uh, yeah, we wrapped out this episode. We're being consistent now. Let's see how long we last. Hopefully, we'll see you guys <laughs> next week. Yes. I'll stop it here. Have a good one.